Well, it's coming over to me, and I'm going to give a disclaimer out there. Any kids or young children watching this, this story might be disturbing, so parents heed warning. R. Kelly is back in the headlines this morning after a new Lifetime docuseries, Surviving R. Kelly, was released this weekend. Now, the six part docuseries details a history of alleged sexual abuse by Kelly towards women and young girls. Take a look. I felt special. I actually thought that I was his girlfriend. The first time Robert had me do sexual acts with him and another female, he actually told me it was going to be his first time and he wanted to do it with me. He would say things like, um, well, you know, if you love me, you won't try to change me. You don't even believe in your own sense of judgment after a while. And you're trying to figure out how do I get him back to the good space? Okay, I'll take responsibility for it. I'll just say it's my fault. I, I'll say yes to whatever it is. I'll apologize. And the woman you just see there is R. Kelly's ex-wife. And also, the series also highlights another marriage to the late singer Aaliyah, who was just 15 years old at the time R. Kelly married her. And Kelly's 2008 trial, where he was found not guilty of 14 child pornography, char pornography charges. Now, the case centered her on accusations that Kelly had made a sex tape with a 14-year-old girl. Now, authorities in Chicago are asking any victims to come forward. Please come forward. There is nothing that can be done to investigate these allegations without the cooperation of both victims and witnesses. We cannot seek justice without you. And this just crossing an in, arrest warrant has been issued for R. Kelly's former manager, James Mason. This is reported after Mason was accused of threatening to kill the father of Jocelyn Savage, who was one of the women featured in the R. Kelly Surviving R. Kelly documentary. Now, R. Kelly has denied all of these allegations. And here to talk more about these allegations is TV host and pop culture expert John Murray, a friend of mine. And he interviewed R. Kelly at his home in Chicago after he was acquitted of the child pornography cases back in 2008. Good morning, John. Good morning. Good morning, Megan. Okay, so let's start off. You are kind of intimate to this whole case, meaning you know people who are in this house, and they're calling it a house of horrors. Describe what you know and what you've heard about what's going on in this house. You know, Megan, back in 2010, there was a guy named Antoine Dobson who went viral for a phrase, hide your wife, hide your kids, and hide your husbands, too. And none of us thought in 2019 we'd be using that same phrase to describe one of the biggest music artists of all times, R. Kelly. I knew people who were employed by him up until very recently. And when I tell you the stories that they've shared to me uh, during their time there, really read like a horror film. They're stories that I can't really tell on morning television. But what I can tell you is that there are odd things that were happening in the house like the girls were being forced to wear clothes from Baby Gap and the Disney store doing various escapades and I can also tell you that in addition to Stockholm syndrome part of the reason why the girls aren't leaving the home is because R. Kelly has documented footage of them doing unmentionable things on video that they're afraid will be released to their family or to the public. Well obviously you're talking about Stockholm syndrome but I'm asking are these girls on drugs or are just they afraid for their lives or do they just not know any better because they're so underage? age. Well, yeah, most of them are impressionable young girls who had aspirations of some form of being in the entertainment industry. And so they meet this man who's having all of this success, and he endears them. He's a masterful manipulator. We've even heard everybody in this documentary, from his wife to victims who have gotten out of the home, talk about how endearing and loving he can be by sharing his childhood trauma and things that he's overcome at portions in his life. So that, compiled with the idea that you have these 17, 18-year-old girls who are trying to be the next Beyonce, uh, thinking that he's the man who can do it only to get in that house and for the man who was going to make the magic happen for them to turn into the monster and then they're too afraid to leave. Well, too afraid to leave. Now, you actually know someone who they thought they were being recruited by R. Kelly or one of R. Kelly's associates. What, what happened to this person? So a, a friend of mine who was an aspiring singer uh, as a surprise by some friends, did a private meet and greet with R. Kelly at a basketball gym in Chicago. And at the end of the meet and greet, one of his associates gave her a black business card and said, Robert really wants to be in touch with you. When she looked at the card, the card was blank, Megan, but something told her to put her cell phone on top of it and it had a glow-in-the-dark telephone number. She called the number, thinking Robert may answer, and the associate answered and told her to come back to another location by herself without her friends. And luckily, she was smart enough not to. Thank God she didn't go back because she could have very well be somebody that they're trying to escape as part of this uh, documentary. A, a glow-in-the-dark card? 
This sounds like espionage. Listen, it sounds like secret R. Kelly's society. got tricks and things. Yeah, I, it's, it's the, the level of his manipulation is incredible. This is very frightening. And you know what? Here's another thing that's very frightening. And maybe you can explain it better to me. His record sales, his music streaming sales have gone up exponentially. I think somewhat 16%. You know, Jada Pickett Smith is coming out against people streaming his music. Even John Legend. Why are the numbers going up? Well, Megan, listen, in context, 16% is not a great jump. When Aretha Franklin died last fall, her uh, streaming numbers went up 1,600%. Uh, when Prince died a couple years ago, his streaming numbers went up 16,000%. So 16% is a small uh, jump in this situation. But I believe that people are revisiting the music because you're learning the backstories and the context of some of these songs as explained by his ex-wife and some of the victims in the house. And so when they tell you what was actually going on in the house or what was happening at a particular time when a song was written, now you want to go back and listen to those songs from a different lens. So I think people are inquisitive about the music and I think they're a little bit embarrassed that they've been singing along to stuff that they thought was major music, but it was really written by a monster. Um, really quickly, John, do you think this docu-series hits it right on? Listen, this docu-series was done in an effort to get girls out of this house. And being that uh, the Cook County and the Fulton County authorities are opening investigations and asking for witnesses and are finally looking into this man. And I will say this, Megan, I feel like if the girls in R. Kelly's house look more like Taylor Swift and Miley Cyrus and Ariana Grande, people would have found a way to stop this predator a long time ago. Good point indeed. All right, John, always a pleasure. I miss you and take care and I'm sure we're going to have you back. I'll, I'll come in studio and do something a lot more fun the next time I'm in L.A. I sure hope so. Bye, John.